Hi guys. I've been tinkering with uh, an Arduino and a couple of little modules that I saw advertised on Amazon. I've been wanting to do some other projects, but there's been a cacophony of errors with Amazon orders. I ordered some components and they were took took weeks where they be actually were um, delivered and then the package was had somebody else's order in there not my components so I had to contact Amazon and um, then they resent them and I still haven't received all the components I need for some other projects that's why there's been a bit of a delay so I thought I would just play around with these things I've got something in mind for some to use these as components in some future projects and what I have is I come across these little guys here uh, they're actually based on the AD9833 square wave sine wave triangle wave and so on a generator and sometimes in your project you need some sine waves or some uh, square waves or whatever these things can actually generate square waves and sine waves up to 12 and a half megahertz and then I also saw these guys here which is TDA 2030 power amplifier board on our little test here I'm using this thing to convert the output of the signal generator to a low impedance output so we can easily use it to output like 50 ohm output that you typically want on a signal generator anyway it's just been tinkering is playing with these things I created a Uh, an Arduino sketch so called it's like um, sort of a mutilated version of C++ and I'll be wanting to try out the latest Arduino IDE 2.03 as it says there on the screen the original Arduino IDE was rather very very limited uh, but this is a lot better I tend to use Visual Studio Code and Platform IO for more serious development because it is still a little better still. But and well also I found out that with the with genuine Arduino boards this system works perfectly well, but with ESP thirty twos and STM thirty twos the compiler is very, very slow. So um, the platform IO version is much quicker. Anyway, so this is kind of a little sketch that um, I took a, um, I started off with the examples for AD, there's, there is actually a library for the AD9833 and I started off with uh, MD AD9833 basic. Uh, it is still called that, but I have uh, completely pretty much changed it. Um, so we call in the library here. We need SPI because that's the uh, serial protocol that it's using. I also hooked up a liquid crystal display for which I'm using a library here. And then I assign the pins as I said 10 11 and 13 for the AD9833 module I put on a trim pot on A0 so that uh, we can actually adjust the frequency and I put a button on there which we can monitor to see if we are wanting to change the modes and I also hooked up a little hexadecimal control 
a rotary control that actually outputs uh, you know binary code. Um, what's that nine doing there? I must have accidentally hit a key on the keyboard or something. Um, let's see what's saved. All right, so um, these uh, outputs has got uh, yeah data zero, one, two, and three from the little control. But I'm using data pins three, four, five, and six on the uh, and uh, Arduino Nano. These are the different modes that it has: triangle, square two, sine square one. Um, we want to display it on the LCD, so we also have a little uh, some uh, text there, strings. Now, the way I've I've put this set this up is I put up to 16 different frequencies 50, 60 hertz, 100, 120, up to 30 kilohertz so that would handle audio frequencies basically but then we also have a, a couple of little routines here to set the modes between sine, triangle and square set the actual frequency in Hertz and here is a little routine to get the code from that little hexadecimal uh, control which I'll show you in a minute uh, so we want uh, data 0 but data 1 needs to be these are the bits we need uh, an integer to come out 8-bit integer there so bit 1 needs to be shifted one spot Bit 2 needs to be shifted 2 spots, bit 3 needs to be shifted 3 spots so that they um, line up properly. Uh, we're only interested in the last 4 digits, so we end it with 15, which is f hexadecimal. And then, but because the control is actually active low, we want to invert it. So that's what that little jigger there does. It's, it's a, con a digital not function, inverts it. And we have, therefore, we generate a multiplier factor from the code there. So if it is 0, the multiplier is 1. If it is 2, the multiplier is 10. And so it goes up by 10s for each one, up to 150 for if we get F coming, you know, 111 binary coming back from that control. And so then we have a set up here to assign the pins and the modes pull-ups inputs and on, on them and so on um, and I'll uh, start the LCD now we're using a little backpack on the LCD display which is actually uses uh, I2S or I squared S or uh, C <laughs> I2C or I squared C protocol uh, to communicate with it so we've got to set that up and then we have some little routine there to get the frequency index so that we can index into that array here with the frequencies in it. And then there's a little loop there. It's pretty simple stuff, really. Digital reads button. It's the button down. If it is, then we increment the mode by one. Um, at the end, we do a delay of, of a third of a second in order to make sure that it's not going to catch that button low again so we don't have any bouncing going on and we get the code from that hexadecimal control and we then get the frequency index and anyway we'll set the multiplier code and the frequency and so on if either one of them is changed if the index is changed or the code is changed and that's basically it okay so this is what we have we got the Arduino Nano over here this is a little rotary control it has up you can rotate it round and round if you want to where this goes from 0 to f hexadecimal one, so 0 0 0 to 1 1 1 1 binary this is the trim pot that actually allows us to um, it's connected to A0 on the Nano that we scan in order to see if we've got to change the frequency 
this of course is the little module and as you can see it's got VCC it's got data ground uh, S data is actually the, um, the the data input for the serial and there's the clock and there's a chip select and here's the audio ground and here is the output this is the push button and of course here is our amplifier module and this control here sets the um, gain and a couple of capacitors there for uh, here for decoupling and this one here is actually used to feed the output of this into the amplifier so that's what we've got you can see it from the side so this little control here see now it says 10 now it's 1 so it's outputting 2 kilohertz if I twirl this control here 3 kilohertz, 4 kilohertz, 5 kilohertz, 7 and a half, 10 kilohertz, 15, 20, 25 and it's a bit touchy on the end there goes to 30 there we go 30, 30 kilohertz and of course we can increase the multipliers now it is 300 600 kilohertz 900 kilohertz hundred and one and a half megahertz 1.8 2.1 megahertz 2.4 2.7 3 megahertz and well if we turn it right up to 15 whoops the biggest that it'll go is four and a half megahertz but the audio module of course can't handle much more I have noticed in testing that 70 kilohertz 80 kilohertz so let's set it we can keep that on 10 a little Let's set it to one kilohertz. There we go, one kilohertz. Here is the output. So move that over a bit. Well, as you can see, we've got. 200 millivolts to a graduation on the uh, yellow one that's the input that's the output of the um, single generator module and we've got 2 volts per graduation which is 10 times more on the output so we get, we're getting 10 times uh, I guess um, amplification factor there and you can see volt peak to peak 620 636.3 volts and 4.8 6.3 6 volts and 4.8 to 4.9 volts on the output nearly 5 volts and of course you can adjust that just about as much as we can get out of it but you can see that's Get distortion okay so that's what we have there and then if we push the button here so now we have a, a square wave I guess for some reason this square wave output is much higher 
then and as you can see in the bottom there the blue trace is showing the limitations a little bit of the uh, audio amplifier of course and then the next one is a triangle wave I have to adjust the trigger here come on there we go and then the next one is the other square wave which seems to be half the frequency of, for some reason I'm not sure what that's all about now I'm actually feeding the signal through a capacitor here that could have something to do with it as well why the um, output actually has a bit of a slant on it but it doesn't matter it's just just been playing with this thing okay back to sine wave so that's what I've kind of been playing with okay so these are this is uh, one of those uh, TDA audio chips and I'll be making up little boards similar to these guys but with uh, plus and minus voltage input so that we can get a higher voltage coming out for a future project and I've got some ultra low ESR capacitors here that we are going to try to use on some of those little buck regulators we've got a a new this is going to be the PCB for a uh, plus 12 volt input but it gives you a minus 12 volt output and also a plus 5 volt output which uh, I'm going to use at some future projects as well that's coming up and uh, as I said I'm waiting for some components so that I can com complete some of these projects so Hang in there and I'll see you guys soon.